Hello, everyone. Welcome into another episode of the Four Quarters podcast powered by Four Quarters Media. I'm your host, Tyler Bennett, here with you once again. This is episode 18, part two. It's day three of our season preview series already. We've taken a look at St. Thomas Tommies, the Lakehead Thunderwolves, and the Humber Hawks so far. Today, August 6th, is all about the Brock Badgers, a team and a program, or a school for that matter, that's near and dear to my heart, having spent three years of my life there. I've heard it all. Walk, talk, go to Brock. It happens. You're always nervous, walking down the stairs, going into market. As soon as somebody comes down, about 50 people stare that you have no idea who they are. It's part of Brock. It is what it is. It was a great three years, and today we talk about Brock, men's and women's basketball. This is part two of episode 18, part number one, which if you haven't listened to already, you can after this. We looked at the women's program. I was joined by a former social media coordinator slash kind of do a little bit of everything for the men's and women's programs, Jacob Smith. He jumped on the podcast uh, to shed some light on the women's program and really share his wealth of knowledge on the women's program at Brock. If you look at his, his Instagram, his social media, his YouTube channel, it's Brock women's basketball through and through. So I figured not many people, if anybody, know as much about Brock women's basketball in the last four or five years than Jacob does. It was only fitting to have him jump on our season preview show, just let him run wild, share stories, just talk about the team at as much length as he wanted. And I just kind of sit back and listen and chime in with a little bit here and there. Just kind of nice. I didn't, he just kind of went on his own and did his own thing, which was fantastic for me. Unfortunately, in part two, you only have to listen to me. I apologize for that. It is what it is. You know, it'll, uh, it'll be a quick one. Hopefully if it's not, I apologize even longer. Don't listen while you're driving. My monotone voice may put you to sleep. Again, apologies in advance. So part two, episode 18, we're looking at the men's program, the Brock Badgers, head coach Willie Manigat, in his heading into his second season in 2020-21. He was named the head coach of the Badgers back on June 26th, 2019. I think he took the job and he was... 30, maybe 31 at the time, if I'm not mistaken. Young. And the younger coaches in the country. Coming off a year in 2018-19 where they went 16-8. and eight, Advanced to the OUA semifinals with wins over Lakehead and Western. Ran into a buzzsaw that is Carlton. And that ended their Nationals hopes a game early. But still, 16-8, and eight, finished second in the West Division. They'd lost Joe Neal Simpson and Cassidy Ryan from that team, headed into Willie's first season. Two, their top two scorers from that semifinals team, Joe Neal averaged 20.5 points and seven rebounds. Cassidy Ryan had 18 points and six rebounds. Big holes to fill on both sides of the ball. And... You're not going to do that with one or two people. It's a by committee kind of approach, and the Badgers did their best. The offense dropped close to 12 points this season, averaged 87, just a shade over 87 points per game in 2018 19, dropped to 75.4. It's to be expected you lose two guys of that caliber. It's going to happen. And then when we get into the roster makeup and who's potentially back and who's potentially gone, you're going to see they had some injuries and some people didn't play, missed some significant minutes, significant stretches of time 
first semester, second semester, the entire season for that matter, they were never really at full strength from the get-go, which is tough to overcome, especially for a first-year head coach. But the Badgers still went 12-10 and 10 in the OUA, finished third in the restructured now Central Division with Ontario Tech coming in. They now went three divisions, of six teams apiece. Finished in third in the Central, advanced to the OUA playoffs in the Wilson Cup, bowed out in the first round to, at the hands of McMaster, 83-71. They trailed by 11 at half, 41-30. And then the writing was on the wall from then on out. McMaster rolled to the 12-point win, ending Brock's season. But all in all, something to really build on for Coach Manigat going forwards. They only do lose two people, guaranteed to lose two people from graduation. Should bring back a significant group, a significant number of their core. And then when we get into the recruiting class, they have four talented players that have some post-secondary experience, whether it's the NCAA, OCAA, or Quebec. Things are trending the right direction now that Willie has a year under his belt. His system is in place. And like we hear from a lot of coaches on the podcast, it takes about two years to learn the system. So now that they're going into year two, they're going to be a lot farther along than they were at the start of last season, which might bode well for their success. But when I was looking at the stat numbers, one that really stood out to me, I'm a numbers guy. I've always been math was my favorite subject in school, public school, high school, I hated it in college and university because it was all symbols and not numbers. I'm not a calculus guy. I'm a math, you know, just standard math stats guy. Brock allowed an average of 75.4 points per game this year. They scored an average of 75.4 points per game. You look at the season totals. They outscored their opponents by a grand total of one point. One point. They scored 1,659 points themselves. They allowed 1,658. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I found that to be, as a numbers guy, that's it's interesting to me. One point. A mere one-point differential across 22 regular season games. They were that close to their opponents. They allowed, or they scored one more point than their opponents. They started out well, too, in the season. They went 3-1 and one in the preseason. Wins against the Citadens at Uquam, McGill, Windsor, and then a loss to Dalhousie. They had some momentum coming into the year, and then it's kind of a bit of up and down kind of year, but they were competitive all season. Five of their ten losses were by six or fewer points. They had two losses by two points, one by a single point. And 12 of their games overall were single digits. They were seven and five in single-digit games. Over half of their games could have gone either way. If any one of those three games that were two points or one point went in their favor, they might have had a totally different playoff situation. And things could have been a lot different. But hindsight is always twenty twenty. It's always if this would have happened this way, and it's, hindsight's always perfect. It's not how the world works. Someone's got to win, someone's got to lose, and unfortunately Brock lost five games by single digits that may have had a different outlook or a different outcome on their season. 12-10 and 10 in year one, third in the Central, made the playoffs, lost in the first round. Offense took a dip, 
defense improved by about four points. Close games all throughout the year. A lot to really build on as they go into year two under Coach Willie. And then to top it off, a sign that you're kind of you're doing something right. The Badgers had four players selected in the Canadian Elite Basketball League draft, tied with Carlton for the most from one team. You really only hear about Carlton when the draft comes around. Didn't hear much about Brock. A lot of me- there was a few memes going around about it being Carlton's league, Carlton Elite Basketball League. And with Ottawa drafting Carlton and Ottawa players, jokes about that going around too, but nobody really discussed Brock. Niagara drafted three, Guelph drafted one. Niagara went and drafted Emmanuel Uatua, Cassius Small Martin, and Daniel Kayer. And then Mitchell Saunders was drafted by Guelph. It means you're doing something right. If you're getting four guys drafted into a professional league, you're doing something right as a program. And hopefully the Badgers can kind of build off last year, try to turn some of those close games that didn't go their way in their favor and try to make a run and get back to nationals like they were a few seasons ago. You look at the roster. And before we get into the roster again, With COVID and the pandemic, everything's changing every day. Some schools are opening gyms. Some schools are not opening gyms until January or November when they can train. Season's not supposed to start until at least January. Enrollment numbers are still kind of up in the air because do people want to waste a year or enroll to do a lab in person and everything else online? Do they want to do remote learning? There's a lot of variables still moving, a lot of moving pieces still to be put in place for the school year, which is intimidating because it's August 6th when this comes out. School year starts in a month. And who knows what is going to play out between now and then, let alone now and next Thursday, the 13th. Heaven forbid. But any roster chatter or discussion, speculation. Don't take this as the be-all, end-all. This might change. And we may post an update saying, okay, here's the updated roster. This podcast is a little outdated. Just don't, don't hold me to it. If it works out this way, fantastic. Does it always? No. Does it ever? Hardly. Just don't don't quote me and say, this is what he said. This is going to be the roster for Brock. No, no, no. This is not. This is speculation based on information we found online and in conversation with others. We've put together a hypothetical Brock roster, if you will. But looking ahead, next season the Badgers should only be without two names from last year's team Tyler Brown and the aforementioned Mitch Saunders both graduated both were honored at a graduation at their seniors night against York back at the end of January fifth year guys they're not coming back they're they're done that's a pretty much a guarantee I would put money. I'll put money on them not coming back. That's a joke. They've already graduated. They're fifth-year players. They're not coming back. Tyler Brown has seen big improvement since year one. Came in fifteen, sixteen. This is his first season at Brock. Averaged seven points per game, and he's improved his offensive production in each season. Capped off his career with a fifteen point six point per game average. Last season, four and a half rebounds, five assists on 36% shooting in 22 games. Finished his career with 1,122 career points. Started 99 games over his career. 
He had 17 games in double figures last year and put together one of his best performances against York on senior night. Went for 26 points, four rebounds, six assists, and three steals to close out his home Brock basketball career in a 94-81 win over the Lions. Ended his career in a big way in front of his home fans. And like you said, in a quote on Seniors Night, he, this has been his life for the last five years. He spent all five years at Brock and really developed into a 1,000-point score, 1,100-point score for that matter. An impact player on both ends of the floor, can distribute the ball, get his teammates involved, can score in bunches if he has to, not afraid to battle inside. Big loss for the Badgers. And then Mitch Saunders, who was drafted by Guelph again in third round, 17th overall in the Canadian Elite Basketball League draft. Two points, two and a half rebounds last season in 21 games played. Didn't play a whole lot, but from a sheer experience standpoint alone, it's going to be tough to replace. But after that, that's it. And for a second year head coach to return potentially seven, eight, nine guys from last year's team and hopefully have them healthy and get a full year out of them, it's not a bad situation to be in. Cassius Small Martin, guard out of Markham, Ontario, only saw the floor in 10 games last season, all of which came in the first semester. He didn't play in 2020. Still averaged 15.7 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 38% shooting. He was the team's leading scorer before he went down with injury, or I don't know why he didn't play, but in the first 10 games of the year. Nine of his 10 were in double figures, and he had three games with at least 20 points. If you get a full year out of him in 2020, 21, especially in a shortened, condensed season that starts in January, you could go for big numbers. Don't be surprised. The aforementioned Daniel Kayer out of Quebec, one of the OUA's top rebounders, finished fourth in the league. Averaging just over 10 rebounds a game at 10.1 to go along with 13 points. He had at least seven rebounds in 20 of his 22 games. Double digits 13 times. Guy is a beast on the glass. Just flat out beast on the glass. Plays the game inside. Does his thing in the paint around the rim. He's a tough matchup, flat out. He's going to beat you on the glass. It's a tough matchup on offense. Try to stop him. He's going to go for 13, 15 points a night. Not much more you can ask for. And then if you can't stop him, or if you try to stop him, God's in Kwakwa. I don't think I said that right. I apologize. Gosman up front, alongside him, both from Pierre Fons, Quebec. Stretch big, 6'6", can shoot from three, hit on 31% of his three-point attempts, 38% from the floor, averaged just shy of 14 points and six and a half rebounds. The French connection up front with Kayer and Gosman. Pick your poison a little bit. Daniel's going to beat you inside. Godsman can stretch the floor and shoot the three. Not afraid to shoot the three either. Gives that front court lineup a bit of versatility and gives them a different look when one or both are on the floor or one or the other or both at the same time. Different looks to the offense that they can kind of roll out and kind of keep opposing defenses on their toes. Then you look in the backcourt, you got Noah Lapierre, Daniel Caldwell, Aaron Goldburn, and Emmanuel Uatua, the aforementioned Uatua, who was injured last year, had to redshirt. I feel like he's been around for a while. He was at Fresno State when I was at Brock. 
because we went down for the Mountain West tournament, and he was at Fresno State then, and that was my second year at Brock. So he's been around a minute, a minute or two. Fresno State, Lynn College, Carlton, Brock, Perry Ellis of Canadian University Basketball. Hopefully he's healthy this year. He's got a ton of talent. Just the ball hasn't bounced his way in his career. So hopefully we get a full year out of Oatua to see what he can really do at full strength, which I don't think he has been since his college career started. You add in again, LaPierre, eight and a half points. Caldwell, six and a half points. Goldburn, five and a half points. Add that in to hopefully a full year of cash to Small Martin. And all of a sudden, this is an intriguing group that the Badgers have back. They're going to be in tough to replace Brown, no question. But they've got pieces back there, and they have seven, eight guys that have played together for at least a year, if not longer, to really build that, that have that chemistry and now understand Manigat's system. They may turn some heads. But I think what really will separate the Badgers from others in the OUA and may help them climb up in that central division is their recruiting class. Four players that have some sort of post-secondary experience. Michael Okeke, 6'4 forward at a John Abbott College, comes from the CCAA. Dakota Lewis, 6'4 guard out of Toronto, Ontario, and the Seneca Sting, post-secondary experience. McFadden Jean, guard out of Montreal from Nomaz to Montmorency, CCAA experience in Quebec again. And Javon Brown. 6'5 guard at Toronto, bringing with him Division I experience in the NCAA from Binghamton, the Bearcats. So you have four pieces, two of which are 6'4, one is 6'5, and McFadden Gene is 6'1. Bring some size into your roster as well. More versatility, guards that can play the two, three, maybe even a four if you go to a smaller lineup at times. We have two or three spots where you can play three of these people, three of these players. Okay. See what you're doing. Look at a guy like Dakota Lewis. 6'4", out of Seneca. Was, he's the reigning OCAA East Division Player of the Year. CCAA All-Canadian was a part of the silver medal winning team. You know, it's not silver, bronze, sorry. Bronze medal winning team this past year at the OCAA Championships. Averaged 21.8 points, six and a half rebounds. Shot almost 49% from the field, 42% from three, and 70% from the line. He's a big guard. He's got some size to him, and I mean big in a muscle way. It's muscular, 6'4", big guy, he's quick, can shoot, can drive, absorb contact, can withstand the physicality of playing inside. And I think he has a game, a style of game, a style of play that's going to translate well to the OUA. Now, minutes may not come right away, obviously with five guards back from last year's team that we just listed. It's a bit of a log jam in the rotation. Then you add in Javon Brown with his Division I experience at 6'5 from Binghamton. Three points and a rebound per game as a junior last season. Shot 41% from the field, so he's another big body that can kind of step in and play some minutes at the three if they need to. The backcourt is crowded for Brock. So I think the biggest question for them is how do you get minutes to all these guys that'll be the most challenging part I think of the plan for the year for Manigat 
But when you have that many old and new weapons at your disposal, is it really a bad problem to have? Especially in an OU way that's always competitive and you can never really have too many weapons. You look at Carlton, for example. They just reload every year and they find a way to make it work with all the weapons they have they find a way to make it work Brock's going to have to find a way to make this all work not to say they won't I, have, I don't really have a doubt that they won't make it work but you got you to wonder that's the one thing that stands out is just in that roster speculation, the seven guys we listed coming back and four coming in, got eight guards. Eight guards in that group. That's not going to be easy to find minutes. There's only 40 minutes in a game. How do you break that up? But to have more options than not enough, I'd much rather have more options than just try to struggle and figure it out with what you have. I'd rather have a lot more options than give a minutes to players and whoever that aren't going to have really much of an impact or have guys playing out of position just to fill it because you don't have anybody to really step up. I think this is, this is going to be an intriguing group for Brock this year. With the returnees they have in Coach Manigat's second season, they understand the system. The bulk of the core is back from last year's team that gained the experience of winning close games and also losing close games. That's going to help them if they find themselves in that similar situation again. They were, like I said, they were competitive in five of their 10 losses. Five of them were by double digits. But even those five games that were decided by seven or less, many of those go their way. You're looking at 14 and eight, 15 and seven, 16 and six, even potentially. They could have been as high as 17 and five which puts you in that top 10 rankings conversation in the conversation for a buy in the first round. All of a sudden, your outlook changes on the season. But hindsight again, 2020, it, it's dangerous to look back and think, oh, if I would have done this, this, and this, and this, we would have been here. You can't change the past. Once it's over, it's done with. Let it go. Move on. Something. Move on. Look at your future. Look at the present. Don't worry about the past because you can't change it. But for us, talking about it, we can look back all we want. That's what we do. But looking ahead, this is this is an intriguing group. Think through again. The question marks are on the backcourt from a minutes standpoint, and who's going to play kind of what role. Are the biggest questions to ask. The front court solid with Kayer and Godsman. Depth may be an issue, but you've added in Okeke from John Abbott, another body up front. The health of Uwatua. Hopefully we get a full year out of him just to see what he can do at full strength. A full year of cash is small, Martin. There are a few question marks. Without, there are for every team. But I don't think these ones for Brock are so big that they'll loom over the course of the season. I think we'll see the minutes situation in the back or kind of figure itself out early on. People will settle into their roles and... They'll be off and running, ready to contend in the Central Division 
ready to contend in the OUA as a whole and try to make a run back to nationals that where they were a couple of years ago. I'm excited to see what Dakota Lewis will do. I really am. Like I said, I think he has a game that can really translate well to the OUA. And with his size, his quickness, his ability to score at all three levels, I think it's going to translate well. And I think if he can find his role early on and settle into that role, he might earn himself some more minutes as the year goes on. It's going to be an adjustment, without a doubt. It's more physical at the U Sports level. But he'll be ready. He's got some size, again. I think he's probably the one addition to Barack I'm most excited to see how it pans out. But Okeke, Brown, Lewis, and Jean, it's a strong recruiting class for Coach Manigat. And time will tell how the season plays out. Do I see them winning the OUA? No. Contending? Yes. Quarterfinals, yes. Semifinals, kind of like a Laurier last year, kind of make a run, an unexpected run, yes. I think they're still another year away from getting back to Nationals. But if they're going to do it, this might be the year because Care is a fifth year. They're losing some guys after this year. Want to make a run now while they're veterans. One last run at it, and they're going to leave it all on the floor. So would I be shocked if they made a run? No, not at all. They're going to do it for the veterans, leave it on the floor, and take it as it lies. The Badgers entering... Willie Manigat's second season on the heels of a 12-10 and 10 campaign. Let's saw him go third in the Central. Bow out in the first round of the Wilson Cup playoffs. They have some unfinished business. Some of those close games could have went their way. This would be a different conversation. But they've got an intriguing group back, led by Cassius Small Martin, Daniel Kayer, and a company with the four-man recruiting class so far. Again, the roster is merely speculation. This is all up in the air. COVID-19 could wreak havoc, and things could change drastically. But we'll update the situation as it goes along. But keep an eye on the Badgers this year. They may sneak up on some teams that finished above them last year and make some noise in the OUA this year. But that wraps up episode... 18 part two of the four quarters podcast powered by four quarters media serving as our Brock basketball Brock Badgers men's basketball season preview that's a tongue twister we'll be back on Monday August 10th for our second audio CCAA season preview where we go to the ACAC and talk about the Grand Prairie College Wolves. But until then, I've been your host, Tyler Bennett. This has been the Four Quarters Podcast, powered by Four Quarters Media. And until we talk next time, as always, continue to spread the word. Cheers.